Hello guys, file upload has been historically one of the most popular topics of questions on forums and Twitter and elsewhere because there are multiple ways to store files, name files, different syntax options, what are disks and drivers, it's pretty confusing to especially beginner developers. So I decided to shoot this video to show step by step the main things that you need to know about file upload with example of two files you see down below. So public file of avatar, which is an image and then CV, which should be private and protected from the public. So in this video, I will show you how to upload those, where are they stored, how to configure subfolders or disks or drivers, what to do if you don't have access to the server to run PHP Artisan Storage Link, then the number one package I would recommend to use for Laravel file uploads, and more small details. So let's dive in. The first thing I want to show you is generally how to upload those files, and I will show you two syntax ways. So if we register with form filler Chrome extension and upload a few files. In this case, both will be images, but generally CV should be probably a PDF, but that doesn't matter in this case. So in the controller of registration store method, which is Laravel Breeze, you need to make a few changes. First, validate those files both. And in our case, avatar is image and CV is generally just a file. And then these two lines, these two blocks are the most important. So first, if we have the file, because it's optional, if request has file, and this is by the way different from request has, has file is a separate method. So if we have the file avatar, we can upload it by one of two options. First, storage disk and provide the disk name, and we will get to that in a minute, and put that file from request file avatar. Another alternative example of the syntax is request file, store, and then the same options public is the same as disk public. This one is a shorter way, so I generally prefer that one, but that's a personal preference. And then for the CV, the same thing, request file store or storage disk local. Now, what's that public and local? All the configuration for so-called disks in Laravel happens in a file config, file systems, PHP. And this is the default state of that. I didn't change anything here. So by default, local is one of the disks, and then you provide the disk names wherever you use them for upload or download anywhere. And disk is defined by what driver is used. In this case, it's local, which means a local file system, the same server hard drive. And then the most important part is to specify the route where that file it is saved. In this case, storage path, which means storage folder in the Laravel project, and then app. And that folder is not accessible from the browser. This is very important. And that's why we store CV in the local disk, because it shouldn't be accessible in public. It's a personal data, right? In comparison to avatar, which should be public. And for that, there is a public disk. Also with driver local, but with different root, storage app public. And this folder is accessible in public with that URL slash storage points to storage app public. If you run artisan command PHP artisan storage link, it creates so-called sim link on the file system level. So points one folder to another folder. And then you can configure more disks with the same driver or with another driver. And we will get to that later in this video. So there's driver Amazon S3. So as a result of all of that, we upload those files, we register, and in the database, we have a new user, I refresh. So the first one was created earlier in my testing. And then we have two file names, avatar and CV here in the database and important where they are saved in the file system with the driver local storage app, and then those two file names from two users. So those are CVs. And then storage app public contains also two files with encoded file names. And again, we'll get to that. But this is accessible via browser. And this is our next subtopic, how to get that file visible. For example, on dashboard here in the navigation, I've showed that image twice because again, there are two ways to show that from the syntax point of view. In the blade file, I have two image sources. So one way to access that is again, storage facade, and then you have storage URL providing that file name. So this is the file name something something dot PNG or JPEG, and then storage URL builds the URL for that. Or another case, if you use public folder or storage app public, you can access that with just doing asset. So asset is a shortcut to public folder. And the actual URL of that, if we right click and do open image in the new tab, this is the URL. 
so your domain name slash storage and slash all the file name as it is saved in the database. Next, the private file, the CV. How can you access that? Of course, it's not public, but what if you want to download your own document like CV or something else? Like this. So you would have a link download CV and then the server would take care of the security permissions and whether you're able to download and then it would allow you to download the file. So for example, if I click download CV now, I would download the file in this case PNG. So how to implement that? For that, you would need to implement your own route with controller probably that would take care of all the permissions, as I said, and then return the download as a response. So here's the code. In the blade, you have a route, download CV. It could have parameters, probably which file to download. In this case, I simplified all of that. And then in the routes web, we have this route to the controller with middleware auth, at least probably it should be, and with the route name. And then in the controller, in this case, it's invocable controller with just one method, single action controller, it is also called. In here, you will probably add some if statement of some check for which file to download. And then the return should be, again, storage disk from local disk, not from public. And then you return the download. And this is the file name. Then as you saw, the browser would automatically download the file. So it's not publicly visible with the URL, but it is possible to return that as a file from the server in Laravel controller or routes. The next topic is the file name. So those long encoded names .png or .pdf or whatever. How can we override those? And technically, it is unsafe to override. Or in other words, Laravel does that for a reason to encode the file names, because if you fully trust the file names from the browser from your client, they may be overridden on the front end with malicious intent. In Laravel documentation, you may find something like this. So get client original name and original extension are available as methods but they are considered unsafe. So a bit safer way is to get an extension from request file, but then still generate a random name just with your different logic. So it shouldn't be image.png or avatar.png. It still should be somehow encoded. But if you want to, for example, for CV, if you want to get that file downloaded with some kind of file name, you can generate that file name on the fly based on current date, for example, or some kind of other logic. And this is the code to change that logic of Laravel default encoding into something else. You still get the extension from request file avatar extension. And I've put that into a separate variable because it is repeated a few times. So here and then extension, but then the file name is UUID and then dot extension. So now if we try to register, this is the result. And in the file name, we have another avatar name, file name with UUID still encoded, but in a different way. The next topic is subfolders. What if you have different types of files and you want to, for example, save avatars in its own folder, but save some other images in another subfolder of storage app public and then avatars. The most straightforward way is to provide the path here, which is by default just slash, but you can provide avatars here like this. And then what happens? The registration is still successful, but the file is saved in a different location. So storage app public and then avatars here. Interestingly, then the file name returned from here contains the folder then. So then I didn't show you, but we save those files as eloquent model field names. And then in the database, if we refresh, we have something like this. So avatars become part of the database column value, which may or may not be your preference. That's also one of the options. As I'm showing in this video, in general, there are a lot of options of how you store the files, where you store them, and how you access them. But then in the blade, for example, in the navigation blade, we don't need to change anything. Just storage URL becomes the file name, including the folder from the database. But if you don't want to specify that subfolder each time you access that file somewhere, you may define a separate disk for avatars. So in the config file system, in addition to public, you may have something like this. So almost the same parameters, almost copy paste from public with one difference. Root is storage app public avatars. And then you don't need to provide it here. The path should be just slash. The database would not contain the folder name. Instead, folder name would be taken from the config here. 
And this is a typical way of using disks in config file system. So on the same driver, whether it's local file system or S3 or something else, you may have different folders or in S3 it's called buckets for different types of files. Now, so far, all that information is based on assumption that you can run PHP artisan storage link on your server. But what if you have the case that you cannot run that command on the production server because maybe you have some shared hosting without SSH or you just generally want to save those files in public folder, which is directly accessible in the browser, not in storage. No problem here. You just need to change the route from storage path to just public path. There's a separate Laravel function for that. So this would be public path without any folder. And in this case would be public path with avatars. But I still recommend you to create a separate subfolder called storage. So in this case, I would provide storage as a subfolder in public path. And in this case, I would provide storage avatars like this. And finally, in this video, I will recommend a package that I use myself in multiple projects, which is Laravel Media Library by Spati. Super popular package. It takes care of a lot of things for you, placing the file names in their own subfolders. It allows you to make some kind of manipulations with files, including thumbnails and more. So I will demonstrate you the difference. If you use Laravel Media Library, it creates a media table with polymorphic relationships with the model that file is attached to. In our case, it's a user ID and then saves a lot of information about the file for the future use. Then in the registration, this is what you need to add from media request to media collection and also specify that it's a private file in this case. And then in the navigation where you need to access that image, you just do auth user get first media URL avatar. And on the eloquent level, you need to configure your user model to have interacts with media and has media here. The result, let's try to register and it is successful. And if we right click the image actually has the same file name, but it is accessible in storage slash one. Why slash one? Because it is saved in storage app public one. So each file will actually be stored in its own folder with the file ID. And in the database, we have a media table, as I mentioned, and we have collection name avatar and collection name CV with model ID five with user, which means it belongs to user number five. And here's the file name in the database also saved. So yeah, I do recommend using Spati Media Library for file uploads to take away a lot of your pain in Laravel. And briefly, let's mention another driver S3, which is a cloud-based service Amazon S3, which means your files would be stored elsewhere on the Amazon servers, but then it's much more scalable and also separate. So for example, if your server breaks down, then the files may get lost in S3. They are kind of separated and protected a bit more, I guess, from this to happen. But it requires to configure quite a few things on Amazon servers before using that in Laravel. So as you can see, there's no root. There are more parameters with ENV. So the code of Laravel would not change. You would still have storage disk S3 and then put file or get file. But the configuration part of this is pretty tricky. And this is described in another article on Laravel Daily Com, which I will link in the description below. It contains pretty much similar information to what I've described in this video, but as a separate section, there's remote server setting up Amazon S3, which contains all the instruction from creating the user credentials and a lot of details. This is a premium article on Laravel Daily Com, accessible for premium members of Laravel Daily website. And by becoming a premium member, you also support this channel to be still daily and still free for upcoming future. I hope this video clears up at least a few small details and questions that you had before. If you have any more questions about file upload, shoot in the comments below and see you guys in other videos.